Um, Sunny, thanks for joining us. Much, Samson, and good morning. Good morning. Um, I, I, I had asked uh, Henry the question, and I don't know whether you share in that question where the Guardian's uh, Jonathan Wilson, um, in describing our circumstance, says that the Black Stars have been abysmal throughout the qualifying process, a fate they undeniably deserve. Um, I would disagree with Jonathan uh, Chapa, known uh, perhaps for 20 years. I will disagree with him. Mm. Um, I would only come to that conclusion if um, the conclusion he made was that, you know, the, the qualifying process by the way it ended was um, disastrous. There's no running away from that fact. But the processes in itself is something we have to examine. It's, it's disastrous, but, but, but not deserving. I don't think it was deserving. Okay. One, given the talents we have, given um, the, the energies that the coaching staff um, put together, only to be blighted, in my opinion, uh, by some you know, unfortunate happenings that happens in football, for example, mass and extensive injuries in the squad. One, uh, I would also have to, you know, some, somehow go the path of Jonathan is saying that um, the coach, you know, would have to also carry part of the can uh, because I thought that some of the decisions he took before the qualifiers started or during the qualifiers did not help us. Um, maybe it's an issue of man management. But that apart, I think that the coach himself exerted himself well towards the qualifying process. The players did their best under the circumstances. And, um, you know, th that culminated in that. An example, an that example, of, an example of some of the, the decisions he took going into uh, the qualifiers that you, you fought. An example. I felt that, um, you know, towards the middle of the qualifiers where he made changes to the leadership of the team. Um, we clearly saw Jordan Ayu complaining to Coach Kwesiapia, who was a coach of an opposing team. Mm. So that tells, if you're an observer from the back, that tells you that obviously there's a problem in the team. If a member of the team goes out there to complain to the coach of the opposing team, it tells you that there are problems with the team. And I thought that that could have been um, better handled. And also to add to the second point of, um, you know, taking the decision not to come along with Andre Ayu, um, at the time that one, he himself had not uh, taken a decision to, um, you know, exclude himself from the team, and he was back playing. I think he should have left the window open for Andre to make a decision um, by himself. And that would have en endeared a lot of people to him. But you can hear people, a lot of the ex-players saying that the way we retire players is not the right way. I thought that Otto could have better handled those situations. Hey, don't, 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 football don't... Managers, don't football managers find themselves in the most difficult circumstances? Um, you talk about Andre, I mean, you were at a time where it was, was poisonous in the public to, to field him, right? Yes, I agree. I agree. But if you leave him out in the ledge completely, and then he comes back to playing, he's playing, and then you are affected by mass injuries, then people will come back and say, why did you do that? And so you see, he didn't have that hindsight, that that's why I'm a bit soft on him. He did not have that hindsight. If he had known, perhaps, that he would be faced with lots of injuries in the squad, in our last game, for instance, eight players we drew. Mm. And even on the match day, we had two or three injuries mm. that are now long-term injuries. If he had had that hindsight, you can be harsh on him. But All he right. doesn't have the hindsight. So I would have thought that these decisions are decisions, you know, um, that, you know, worked against so, so, largely not as far. So, Sunny, let me ask the question, what should be done now? 
Um, sucking the coaches out of the way uh, for you, I, I'm, I'm sure I've heard you somewhere. Um, we've heard people like Nana Komia, yes. others I, I, who say that, no, this is not the right thing to do. If you continue to do that, then you are not going to have a consistent team that will be able to work for the next time. Uh, but I was using the uh, kid in school example, and people just send me messages. They say, I'll just pick the kid out of that school. That whole school <laughs> must be shut down. What do you say? <laughs> no, I don't agree with that notion. In football, uh, you realize that sometimes longevity does you some good. And um, the best examples we can go is um, the, the Angolan coach, Pedro Gonçalves. He's coming up to about the 10th year. We're in the same group with him. He's coming up to about his 10th year with the team. And that applies to Ali Sise, the coach of the Senegal national team. They kept faith with him. Now, look at the raft of coaches who've changed over the past few years. And you say that if we give some stability, perhaps if the coach doesn't show or has not demonstrated that he's capable of steering the team in the right path, yes, you would fire him. But he demonstrated consistently that he's the man to steer the team in the right path. Now, look at, let's take the points one after the other. Look at the time, the first time he took the team. He took the team when everything was dis disheveled. Things were haywire. He came, put the team together, qualified against the almighty Nigeria team of star-studded players with a team of an average age of about 20 years and took them to the World Cup. And our World Cup was not disastrous. Imagine that we were the lowest ranked team in that group. We went there, we beat South Korea, we played a very good game against Portugal and unfortunately lost against Uruguay. When you have such a young team, you can say, oh, from there they can grow and mm. be better. Unfortunately, um, we brought in Chris Houston. He completely botched it. Hmm. And there, there was a need for us to rebuild. And to be honest, some of the players also lost form in that intervening period. I'm surprised Somebody you can like say Sandy. what you say about Chris Hutton that you can't say about Otuado. I can't say that about Otuado because, look, our play under Chris Hutton, you would admit, was completely disjointed. But if an Otuado team is playing, and I've spent the past three or four days since we bombed out of the qualifiers, Watching at the matches again, looking at the World Cup qualifiers, the match we, play, we played against Central African Republic and Mali. Mali, we beat them in their home in the World Cup qualifiers to revive our World Cup chances. I see a team that can do well, that can grow. So I, I'm calling for patience for the coach, for him to be able to build a team of these young players we have, then we can move forward in the right direction and get things done. The coaches, human beings like you and I, would make mistakes, and they will learn from some of these mistakes to be better. The consistent changing of coaches won't help us. We have a young team. Uh, just this week, three of our players were said to be the best dribblers in the English Premier League. All of them are maybe before uh, their mid-20s. Mm. This is a team that has a lot of potential. You, so we should you, not just destroy everything. You, you, Let's keep you, them you will make you will make the case that Quesia Pia should have been kept for the same reasons you are giving uh, for Otoado. In that at that time, yes, I would have thought that Quesia Pia should have been kept at that okay. time. Yes. Okay. So so immediately immediately um, if we we have any hopes at all. In the next, uh, you know, World Cup qualifiers. World yes. Cup qualifiers. In March. Yes. Yeah. Um, in in a minute or two, tell me, what should we be doing if we have to? We have to get that. Give us a list. I think number one, we should be uniting the football family. I think there are too many reactions within the football family. Um, previously, we used to go to the battlefield as a united front. Uh, some players have grievances. Uh, some members of the football family have grievances. Uh, the media has grievances. The FA has grievances. Uh, and we have elders in the house. 
I would think that the first thing we do is to put the family together, unite them. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, as the first measure, get okay. the management committee together, um, a, a good management committee that can unite the football family. I'm hearing some names that are not uniting factors within the football family. There are lots of people that I'm hearing that, you know, will even evoke anger when they are, their names come up. I think that we should be working towards that and go with the united front in the future. The future will be better, I'm sure. Nobody, nobody in this management should suffer anything for what has happened. I think there should be changes. The current management, as it is now, I think there should be changes. Um, you know, a lot of things have changed. Coaches have changed. Uh, some of the technical staff have changed. Uh, so if persistently it doesn't work, I think the current management should be changed. And we should have a new management team that would be a uniting factor for the entire football family. Okay, thank you. Um...